How much should you spend on a gaming PC? Is a more expensive computer really that much better? In this video, we're going to answer the big question and explain everything from budget behemoths all the way to monumental monsters. The good news is that PC gaming, even now, can be very affordable. But of course, as with all things in life, you certainly get what you pay for. So put your wallets down for a second, folks, and let me help you find the perfect gaming computer, right after a short word from this video sponsor. Lexar's NM800 SSD is here and offers crazy high performance for a very reasonable price. With read speeds up to a whopping 7400 megabytes a second, this PCI Gen 4 drive is perfect for super quick load times in the next gen games. Learn more today with the link below. Let us begin. What's the difference between a cheap gaming computer and a more expensive one? Well, put simply, it's all about performance. A more expensive gaming PC should be more capable at playing your favourite games and allow for a smoother gaming experience with a higher frame rate. Games are typically at 30 or 60 frames a second on console, whilst PCs have an unlocked and variable frame rate. And the more powerful the graphics card, the more FPS can be pumped out. Not only this, but higher levels of performance means that you can pump up your games with better settings to make them look better, higher resolutions to have more detail, and even higher frame rates than that horrible 60 hertz that a lot of games are limited to on console. This is all sounding pretty rosy at the moment, but there is a big but, however. As you turn up the settings, the game gets more demanding, and thus requires a more expensive computer to run in the first place. This puts us in a bit of a catch-22 situation, as you can spend quite literally an infinite amount of money on a gaming system, and you'll still find that there will be some titles that you can't run at 4K, 8K, at sky-high frame rates. you're always going to be limited somewhere. So in order to know how much it is you need to spend, you first need to know what you're going to play, and what you'll be playing it on. Fun fact, bigger screens alone make no difference. Instead, it's the resolution and refresh rate that you need to pay attention to. Typically, you're looking at 1080p, 1440p, or 4K UHD, but there are ultra-wide resolutions too, just to make things a little bit more complicated. It doesn't always work like this, but as a general rule, let's say you're playing a game at 1080p, 70 frames a second. In order to play that at 4K, which has a resolution that is four times higher than 1080p, imagine four boxes of 1080p, that makes 4K, to get 70 frames a second, you would need four times the processing power to actually get that same frame rate, so it's a big jump. And frame rate is such a big topic because loads of people would rather have a lower quality image, be it from reduced resolution or in-game settings, but then have a faster frame rate which gives you lower latency. And lower latency is brilliant because it means your reaction times can actually be a fair bit quicker, and moving the mouse around would be significantly smoother, and this is ideal for playing multiplayer games where every millisecond matters. Do be careful though, as frame rate will vary wildly from game to game, so just because you can run Valorant at 200Hz, it doesn't even mean you can play Warzone at 60 necessarily. At the end of the day, it's all down to the exact game that you're playing and the settings that you're choosing to play at, but ultimately, if you don't have the processing power to actually get the frame rate that you want, well, you're not gonna have the frame rate that you want. So step one, find out just how intensive the games are that you actually want to play, and then pick yourself a monitor. 1440p at 165 hertz is the current sweet spot, but I'll leave links to my favorite monitor options below at all price points and resolutions. Then you can start looking at benchmarks for those titles. I already have a decent array on the channel, and here you'll be able to lock down the exact graphics card that you need to get the PC performance that you're after at the resolution of your choice. There are other GPU features to look out for, but these are usually a little bit less important. Nvidia, for instance, is a lot better at ray tracing, you have their DLSS technology, but then AMD tends to be slightly better value if you know where to look. Either way, knowledge is power here, so always do your research. Unfortunately, you're not quite out of the woods just yet as the GPU is only one part of the puzzle. The CPU, or the processor, is almost equally as important to gaming prowess. You can think of the graphics card as a dog running on a lead. The CPU, that's its owner. If it can't run fast enough, the poor woof will start to stutter, and it'll be limited in its maximum speed. I'm actually quite amazed at my brilliance there. That was a great analogy that actually tells the story very well. Not so amazed by that, though. Just bear in mind that if you're not limited in any way by the CPU, then buying a faster processor isn't going to give you a better gaming experience. All you'll be doing is spending more money on a faster chip that's not going to help your games. An AMD Ryzen 5 or Intel Core i5 is usually enough for most people, but it will depend on how intense the game is and how you actually want to run these games. Overly large frame rates or settings like ray tracing are actually surprisingly CPU intensive. Now you can start factoring in other bottlenecks like memory or RAM. Ha! 
Memory is RAM. Yeah, I stole that from the IT crowd. Don't get me wrong, RAM definitely can be an issue, but it's far less common than CPU or GPU bottlenecks. As a general rule, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3600 megahertz or higher shouldn't hold back any normal game, so it's not really worth forking out for anything more, especially when it's so easy to upgrade this later on. See my video in the top round corner of your screen if you do want to learn a little bit more about memory and RAM. Moving on to motherboards. These can provide you with the ability to use better processors, equip faster storage speeds, and give you more ports and features. But for gaming, they're not actually usually worth spending masses on. Performance between different motherboards is usually pretty similar, so I'd say go for an entry level to mid range board if you do want to nail price to performance. Again, you can find my video all about this topic in the top round corner if you do want to learn a little bit more. Even PCI Generation 4 support on motherboards is not properly utilised yet. I last tested this on an RTX 3090 with Gen 3 versus Gen 4, and I didn't see any performance difference between the two. And it's the exact same thing with Gen 4 SSDs. The difference between 3 and 4, as I last tested in this video in the top round corner of your screen, saw no significant difference in load time, if any at all. I guess it's more a case of how future-proof do you want your computer to be? Better features in the long term could actually save you from buying a whole new board and CPU, but then again, it could also be a huge waste of money. Something that isn't a waste of money is noise! See? It's annoying, isn't it? A better cooling system can let you overclock your components a bit more, sure, but for me, the real advantage is having a quiet system. Both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are near enough silent, even under full load, so why should your PC be any louder? It's certainly worth noting that more powerful hardware will use more power, so the more expensive the computer, the better cooling it likely needs. A big, open case with loads of airflow is a good idea, but upgrading the stock CPU cooler to one with a larger heatsink and fan is the best way of getting a quieter PC. That, and buying a graphics card that has a big cooler on it. Don't forget your storage, by the way. While Gen 4 speeds are definitely more for future-proofing at the moment, higher capacities are not, and they're a must for anyone with a big game library. Warzone alone can take up to 170 gigabytes, so I'd say unless you're new to PC gaming, a 1TB or larger SSD is a must. And then finally, the last piece of the puzzle, the visuals. How do you want your PC to look? Maybe like this? The case is an incredibly personal decision. How do you want it to be? Big or small? bold or understated. The more features that you get, and the higher quality the materials and case fans are, then, you guessed it, the more expensive the case gets, so just be sensible about it. If you're on a budget, please don't spend hundreds of pounds on a case, it's not going to get you more FPS. And that really is what this whole thing is all about, FPS or frame rates. PC gaming is a sum of a load of different luxuries, and it's a massive rabbit hole where you can go down and down and find all of these things and you must have the best in all of these areas. But the only thing that matters to every single PC gamer out there is frame rate and how your game feels. This is all just one big game of diminishing returns, so I highly advise that you follow these tips in order, as this will help you extract the most from your money. Again, there's no right or wrong decision, it's your PC at the end of the day, but just please get one that actually suits you. I'd recommend grabbing yourself a pen, this one is invisible, and then writing a list of all of the parts that you actually need to make your PC run at the desired settings and frame rate that you want, because you won't be disappointed if you know what it is that you're buying and then you actually buy it. I think a lot of people will do like a search for a gaming PC, buy one at the budget that they have in mind, but not actually know what the components mean and then end up a little bit disappointed when something isn't as you'd expect. Don't get me wrong, it definitely can get quite confusing, but that's what I'm here for. This video, loads others, go and find more and they will explain everything in great detail. But thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts, what are you going to be buying soon, is there anything I've missed out? What advice can you give to other PC gamers that will be getting new components? Let's start a community, let's have a conversation with each other. But either way, absolutely smash that like button and get yourself subscribed. And if you do want to find my favourite components that you can get for your gaming PC, then I've listed them all down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not bask in the speed of Lexar's NM800 SSD? If you want to add super fast storage to your computer, then the NM800 is incredibly easy to install, requiring just a small screwdriver and just a minute of your time. Get your PC geared up today with the link below. Thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.